All righty. So I wanted to come out here and talk about a lot of what survey markings mean at theme parks. Obviously, this is um, essentially anywhere on job sites, construction sites and all that. But I've done a lot of research um, and have connected to a lot of people uh, who understand this topic really well. And I basically have stumbled upon probably some of the biggest news that I could break on Canada's Wonderland and a future project. And before I want to come out and release that, I wanted to talk about this because what I'm about to talk about is going to prove um, something I'm going to talk about in a later video. But essentially, uh, this video is going to talk about the various survey markings on a site and the steps that occur before a project goes under construction. So what is a control point? A control point um, is something like a traverse of series of points established on the job site connected through the measurement of angles and distances. These measurements are used in a process called traverse computations, um, which determine the relative location of the points to each other. In construction, traversing is used to establish control around a job site to lay out the structures. Control point is a point on the ground or any permanent structure whose horizontal and vertical location slash position is known. Control points are used as a starting point of the surveyor's CAD file. Um, so where should control points be placed for my GPS equipment? So this is very important. There should be a minimum of four points surrounding the job site. They should be placed on the ground in a hub, drill hole, PK nail, or iron rod. So we've seen a lot of these various ones at Canada's Wonderland in specific. And for example, another park like Six Legs Great Adventure has used them more recently on their new coaster that's being built. So pretty much anything that can be in the ground that you can get the point of the GPS rod on. They should surround the site as much as possible. Um, if you draw a line from point to point, it should close around the site. So that is very key information and how I've been able to figure something out that's really important and groundbreaking in terms of news on Canada's Wonderland. So I'm not ready to talk about it yet. I don't want to show you what I found at Wonderland. So I'm going to show you something that I found um, earlier this season that I actually described incorrectly. So if you remember, we found these triangular um, markings with circles in them. Um, so I had said that those represent a where a building or structure would go. So I had misunderstood something and hadn't done my research in full, whereas now I understand that these are actually control points. So if you look at where these markings were, they were surrounding the front gate construction project. And it makes a lot of sense now. And it actually helps me solve, um, again, one of Canada's Wonderland's major uh, new additions. So you're not going to see it in this video. I am going to pull up a map surrounding the mountain that shows you some of these other survey markings. But there's another future project that's really massive that I've been able to figure out with these control points. So... We have control points off the map. You have control points and traversing off the map. So again, you'll see a lot of various types of survey markings. You have the red checker ones, you have the black circle checkered ones, and then you have the distance um, reflective targets. All of these are key survey markings in a major project um, where you would need a CAD file to do so stuff like a, a structure, like Lazy Bear Lodge, a ride like Windseeker or a new launch coaster, or even as simple as a new flat ride like Tundra Twister. You would need a lot of, the, a lot of these survey markings um, to determine a boundary, um, permanent structures, vertical references, and horizontal references. So these are all really important. So when you start to be able to understand these and read them, you can actually figure out a couple of things. So for example, if you're just looking at this map of survey markings and um, control points on this, uh, this map in front of you right now of the mountain, it looks really confusing. However, with the understanding that there are multiple projects in this area, you can figure out exactly where those projects are and their boundary. So I'm not going to go too in detail about that right now. I want to talk about this on the podcast tomorrow with Surya. But um, for example, you can definitely tell that Thunder Run might have its own little project and the Alpine area might have another project as well. And then you can kind of see the startings 
of a boundary set for the new launch coaster um, that's rumored to be coming coming to Canada's Wonderland in 2025. So it's all really interesting. Now, when you start seeing spray paint and flags, I do want to stress that flags are overly used. So little yellow, red, orange flags actually could mean nothing a lot of the time. For example, the go-kart track at Canada's Wonderland has had these flags in it for three years now and it's meant nothing. Now, when you start seeing spray paint on the ground, like you saw at Front Gate, you can know that construction is most likely going to start very soon, especially when you see control points going in. It's the ending of, for, uh, for example, the surveying project. So to put that into perspective, you will see red and white checkered markings going up, distance markings with the reflective targets, um, and other vertical control points like the black and white checkered ones. But when you start to see that triangle with a circle go in on it, you know that something is about to begin. That's them double checking their control points and their traversing um, to ensure that all those surveying points that they got, the GPS surveying points, are correct. Once those are determined to be correct, a construction project can move forward. So for example, on this newest breaking news that I'm about to break sometime soon, um, probably this week, I just want to make sure, I just want to see one more thing completed, and then I'll be able to confirm something massive um, for Canada's Wonderland. So I'll definitely be keeping an eye out somewhere in the back of the park um, on something big, and then once we get that, I'll be able to tell you guys something major. So I just wanted to get this information out there. Um, I, this is gonna help a lot of parks. If you start seeing some of these things um, pop up, feel free to reach out to me too. I would love to help anyone as I even start to get a better understanding. So for example, even like three weeks ago, I said something about some of these markings that wasn't true. But as I have covered construction more and more, you start to get a complete better understanding of what these things mean. So if you have any questions about your home park, snap a picture of the marking, send it my way, and I can help set you on your way to figuring out what some of these things mean. But hopefully this video helped you understand any markings at your theme park. Again, stakes is not a surveying tool, it's actually a construction tool. So when you start seeing those, that's when you know construction is about to begin. So this video was about surveying markings, which you should see anywhere from one to three years ahead of a construction project. Anyways, thanks so much for watching guys. Have a good one, bye.